<laughs> Give over, Andy. Don't waste wine. As father of the bride, I would like to thank you all for coming today as we're celebrating the marriage of Drew and Sophie on this special day. I, I couldn't be any prouder of my daughter as I walked her down the aisle. And doesn't Sophie look beautiful? Radiant. <laughs> Orgasmic, that is. Radiant <laughs> on her wedding day. <laughs> and that it means a lot to us, seeing all of their family and friends in the same room and to celebrate this happy occasion together. It is now the time to officially welcome Drew into our family. But, Drew, but truth is, Drew has been part of our family since we first met you. Aww. Not true. <laughs> No, he is a Wolves fan, though. <laughs> Sorry, I'm drunk. <laughs> How drunk am I? No, not that drunk. And to Colin and Ellen, thank you for welcoming us into your family. I can see how your son treats my daughter, that you raise him to be a perfect gentleman. What the hell? Good on him, Here's a credit to you both, and we hope Colin, Ellen, Peter, and Matt can share with us many happy occasions like the one we share today. We feel happy in the knowledge that we trust Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Only a joke. With our daughter's happiness, we've seen what an impact you have on her. She glows and radiates love and happiness. And I know you both have the strong foundations for a successful marriage. Love, trust, and respect. And whatever comes your way, you'll handle it together with confidence to fulfill the commitment you have made today. I am now going to over, I am now going to hand over to my son, Paul. As when I get nervous, I tend to piss pronounce my worms. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I don't know how I follow that. <laughs> right, well, good afternoon, everyone. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Paul, and I'm Sophie's much younger brother. <laughs> Our dad isn't one for public speaking, but dad, I thought he did absolutely brilliantly then. In light of dad's dislike for this, Sophie asked me, or rather demanded, that I also say a few words. I then asked Sophie if I was allowed to banter her in this speech, to which she told me no, and as a result, my, result, my speech is now rather lacking in content. <laughs> However, thankfully, Sophie's mum, Sandra, has put down some lovely words on paper, which I'll come on to. However, Sandra, the first draft was like a Jackie Collins novel in part. <laughs> Sophie is a beautiful, kind, caring, generous, warm, outgoing, friendly, family orientated. <laughs> Sparkling, witty, courageous, <laughs> ambitious. <laughs> Sophie, I'm really struggling with your writing on this. <laughs> Sophie doesn't take herself too seriously, but nonetheless, she tries to excel in all she does. She once came joint first in a costume competition at school where she dressed as a Barbie in a box. Something which, based on Drew's stag do photos, he'd probably be happy to give go to a go to as well. <laughs> All that said, today is a massive honour for me, as in all sincerity, Sophie was, until my daughter was born, my most favourite person in the world. It's lovely today that my son is a page boy and a handsome devil, and my daughter looks beautiful as a bridesmaid. I'm so proud of you both. But as our dad has already said, Sophie, you look incredible today. As I stand here now, Drew, in my biased opinion, you've really hit the jackpot. But, but, <laughs> but, there is a but. You're an amazing bloke, and it's been clear from day one how you feel about Sophie and how her happiness is a priority to you. I know this will continue through your marriage together. It's also a day where Drew officially becomes Uncle Drew. And before the ceremony, Drew said how excited he is about this and how he'd love to start having the kids over every weekend for a sleepover. <laughs> <coughs> Drew, 
were absolutely blown away by his superb suggestion. <laughs> so, some words from Sandra. Sophie and Drew's first date was a cold, dark November night, and wearing a thick coat, scarf, and bobble hat, she went out on a date in Fenton. So for anyone not from Stoke, Fenton's a bit like Beirut, only more dangerous. <laughs> This isn't what Sophie had in mind for wowing and making an impression, but clearly she did. The next day she had the biggest smile ever, and that's when her mum knew she'd found the one. She told, the mom, she told her mum that he made a laugh, and the fact that she was tall, dark and handsome helped. So sparks did fly on that bonfire night a few years back, and Sandra says thanks go to Kim and John for setting them up and starting this love story. As an older brother, I've been able to watch Sophie sail through life. She's had set timescales to achieve her life goals, Settled in a career by 25, engaged by 26, and married by 27, which she just missed due to COVID. And a family by 28, so fingers crossed that won't be too far behind. And in the immortal words of Peter Kay, the day where I finally become Uncle Knobhead will be a great day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already there. <laughs> I didn't hear what he said, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad and Sandra have been together for 30 years. Well done, Sandra. And as your, mo and your mother would like to pass on to you some sage advice. Be true to yourselves, share your joys and burdens, love and laugh as much as possible, be best friends. And when things don't go well, forgive as often as is required. Something my own wife is exemplary at. Finally, <laughs> Drew and Sandra wrote this, but this really is my motto for life. A happy wife is a happy life. Sophie, I'm lucky that my daughter has so many strong role models in her life. She has the best mum, amazing aunties, and an incredible nan sat not too far away. But when I do this speech for my daughter, in what I hope will be a good few years from now, if she turns out to be anything like the person that you are, then I'll be the proudest dad ever. Just as I'm a proud brother now, just as your sister is proud, just as your mum and dad are proud, just as your sister-in-law is proud, and just as your niece and nephew are proud. And I'm sure, most of all, your husband is proud. So finally, Sophie and Drew have a long and loving marriage together. And if you'd all raise your glasses to Mr. and Mrs. Morris. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Ken. Um, lovely speeches, very kind words, really great. And hello, everybody. <laughs> I've been told I've got to keep it short and keep it clean today. So I've had it dangled in a pint of icy water for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> seems, seems to have done the trick. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> On behalf of, <laughs> you got this. Thing. You're right. <laughs> but uh, on behalf of uh, my wife and I, thank you for coming and sharing our day with us. It's great to have so many friends and family here with us to share our special day. We really appreciate all the effort you've made to be here. But unfortunately, there are also those that can't be here with us today. Um, you've seen the table on the way in, the photos of those that we greatly mi uh, miss and wish could be here as part of our big day. And although they're not here in person, they will always be in our thoughts and in our hearts. So can you please join me in our first toast to absent family and friends. Ken, Sand, or is it mom and dad number two now? <laughs> Firstly, thank you for your generosity today. Um, it's really made today extra special. Me and Soph really appreciate it. And Sand, it was great of you to take some of the wedding stress away from Soph, having all the opinions on things that I wasn't really bothered about. <laughs> can can candles, <laughs> flowers. <laughs> but from day one, you've been so welcoming to me, treating me like part of the family. We've even had a couple of holidays together in Bali and in Turkey. I'm never going to keep up with the family tan with my mixture of white and pink skin, but <laughs> yeah, okay. But thank you for um, allowing me to marry Soph. I promise to let her look after me uh, forever. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Dad, thank you for everything you've done for me throughout my life and for raising me to be the man I am today. Safe to say you've done a pretty good job after making all the mistakes for your firstborn. But <laughs> we live and learn. <laughs> now, um, a lot of you will know me for the quality of my jokes. <laughs> High or low, I'll let you be the judge. But um, there's only one man to thank for all that. Um, so if you want to hear all the same jokes that I'll told, slightly better, go and see my dad after this. I'm sure he'll oblige. <laughs> um, just to let you know, after the speeches, we're going to sit down for a meal, and it's all going to be based around meals from my childhood. So to start with, we're having a tin of cold beans. Uh, main course is tomato sauce sandwiches, and then a bowl of jelly for dessert. <laughs> so I've got that to look forward to. Now on to the best men. Nathan, Stu. 
I've got to have two because these pair are inseparable. They're already like a married couple themselves. I'm not actually sure they've managed to write a speech as they can never agree on anything. It's probably just going to be them bickering for 10 minutes. So. But I've known these two for years and they've always been there to pick me up when I've been down. Even a couple of times off the dance floor in silks, can I? <laughs> but thank you both for organising me too, great stag do's. And top man shoe for letting me borrow your clothes while we're out there. Although I must say those dresses were a bit baggy on me. <laughs> <laughs> on to more yoshes. Um, Sam, Pete, did a great job of getting everyone sat down today and that's more than I ever could have expected from you. So thank you. <laughs> Huge thank you to the Style Show today, uh, Page Boy Zach. Um, you're looking absolutely dapper in your suit and putting me to shame. Thank you. <laughs> On to the bridesmaids, who all, I'm sure you'll all agree uh, look beautiful today. Thank you for always being there for Soph over the years and for also organising her a great hen do. I know it was great because she's only just shut up about it. So, <laughs> and thank you for getting Soph ready almost on time, only five minutes, which is a new record. So, yeah, thank you for that. But on that note, now I'll turn my uh, attention to the most important section of the speech. And it all comes down to one day in 2016, at a time where you think all hope is lost and you're never going to find happiness again. Somebody comes into your life and turns it all around. And over the last six years, I've been to unbelievable times, uh, experienced highs I didn't think I'd ever get to. But on the 21st of July 2016, Foson completed their takeover over the walls, fired us back into the Premier League <laughs> <laughs> and into the quarterfinals of Europa League. So, uh, can we please all have a toast? Up the walls. <laughs> no, but obviously, um, Sophie, my wife, is the main event today. And we did meet uh, in 2016 when we set up on a blind date by our good friends, Kim and John. So, yeah, thank you to you, pair. You're the beginning of all this, has made everything uh, possible today. And special thanks to Kim uh, for actually getting Sophie to turn up on the night because she always tells me she didn't want to come. <laughs> but I have to say, on that night when I first laid eyes on Soph, I thought to myself, you've got no chance. <laughs> but fair play to her, she kept trying. <laughs> <laughs> and the first move came not five minutes after we parted when she sent me a picture of a box. <laughs> She'd fell off it at the gym earlier that week, uh, hurt her back and couldn't wait to show me the culprit. It's surprising, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but from that day, we've never looked back. And in the last six years, not a day gone by I've spent with Sophie, I've been bored, even through lockdowns. And it feels amazing to stand here today after marrying my best friend. <laughs> when I saw you walking down the aisle, I took my breath away. You look absolutely stunning today. And I'm the luckiest man in the world to be able to call you my wife. Aww. Never met such a caring, loving, funny, and intelligent person. Well, I say intelligent. <laughs> Sophie's also the person that told me if you put a dandelion under your chin, it'll tell you if you like milk. <laughs> <laughs> But I'd never change it for the world. And it's for that reason today I've resigned myself to you wearing fluffy friend's pyjamas and asking me to get a dog every single day. <laughs> so before I hand you over to the Chuckle Brothers, can you please all uh, join me in one last toast? Up the Snugglies. <laughs> Thanks, Drew, for ruining our speech. You literally just gave away all our jokes, so. <laughs> <laughs> George. George too early. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Stuart. Spell S T U A R C for, for all that you don't know. I'm one half of Drew's best men, and I'd just like to start by saying that anyone who knows me, or Drew for that matter, knows that we are both a stickler for the rules. And with that in mind, I want to lay down a couple now. Firstly, if you have a mobile phone, please leave it switched on. Keep yourselves entertained. <laughs> And secondly, if anyone texts you any good jokes, can you please forward them to me? Afternoon, I am Nathan, one half of the Chuckle Brothers. When Stu and I were made best, best men, we knew this speech was going to be difficult, following Drew, the self-proclaimed comedian of the group. So we decided early on that speech was going to be like a miniskirt, long enough to cover the essentials, but short enough to keep your attention. Stu also mentioned to me earlier that he was a bit nervous about this speech, but thankfully, as I've done it before, I had some great advice for him. I said, Stu, Try not to be too charming, witty, or intellectual. Basically, just be yourself. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> We'd just like to start by thanking Sophie and Drew for including ourselves, the bridesmaids, and the groomsmen in their special day. Talking to the bridesmaids, wherever you are, dotted around, I'm, all, I'm sure you'll all agree they look absolutely beautiful today. 
I would also like to thank Drew for making us joint best men, because as he mentioned, anyone that knows me and Stu knows we argue and disagree on absolutely everything. So planning a stag do and writing this speech has been extremely difficult, and I'm glad it's nearly over. <laughs> Sorry, Drew. Finally, we'd both just like to thank Drew for paying for the reception drinks today. As we know, for someone so tight, it must have been, good. It must have been difficult. <laughs> To be fair, this isn't the first time that Drew's been generous with the drinks. Back when we were younger, me, Sam and Drew made a trip up to Scotland and headed out to Glasgow on a student night. It was £1.50 double vodkas. It was the dream for three tight lads like us. Completely out of the blue and definitely out of character, Drew came back from the bar with a £180 bottle of Grey Goose for us all to share. Needless to say, he regretted that the next morning and I think to this day, he still angers him. Sounds not, sounds not as well, Drew. Drew claims to have a bad memory, but compared to mine, which is terrible, his is photographic. But don't worry, Soph, I'll remember to remind him in the condoms tomorrow. <laughs> 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 that, that was the joke. <laughs> Drew claims to have a bad memory, but compared to mine, which is terrible. Oh. <laughs> as, as I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I've known Drew now for about 20 years, but probably only best friends for about two due to me never bothering to actually text him back. We met, and this is the one that I'm not sure it's true or not. We met in the early years of high school. I can't remember. Back in the day, we both used to play for the Birtwood Dragons Football Club. Drew played for the Yellow Yellows, the second team, and I played for the Reds, the first team. From this early age, you could see that I was going to be better than him. <laughs> Anything you didn't need knowledge for, at least. I did wonder whether this was due to his lack of nutrition back then as he would regularly just eat cold beans out of a tin for his dinner <laughs> and the odd occasional cocktail sausage. <laughs> Nowadays, he eats nothing but chicken, rice and broccoli. <laughs> oh, how times have changed. I have a massive belly <laughs> and Drew's in the shape of his life. But... <laughs> Pass me that tin of beans, Drew. I have known Drew for nearly 15 years and in that time, he's not only been a great friend, but also a very loyal one. And this loyalty was proven on a weekly basis when I was in charge of a Sunday league football team. Drew would turn up every week, even with the worst of hangovers, in the hope that he'd be playing, only to be told he wouldn't be starting and would have to be linesman. He never really moaned and always did a great job and was definitely the best linesman we've ever had. <laughs> However, there was one time when we were very desperate, Drew got the call up to play. And to be fair to him, he did quite well and managed to earn himself a penalty. Unsurprisingly, he missed, because in cla classic Drew style, he tried to be funny and chipped the ball down the middle after the keeper dived. But as you can probably guess, the keeper didn't move, just stood there and caught the ball, making Drew look stupid. <laughs> Needless to say, Drew was back doing what he did best the week after, being the linesman. I think we can all agree that it's been an emotional day. Even the cake is in tears. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, thought you might like that one, Drew. Typical dad joke. Talking to dads. Colin, I can see that you all laughing as well. I think it's safe to say, when it comes to jokes, Drew really does follow in his dad's footsteps. Terrible sarcasm and shocking jokes. You were stunned for that. <laughs> <laughs> Back when we were younger, Drew had a couple of aliases that he was often known by. Angry Andy and Fandy. <laughs> Both are probably quite self-explanatory, but we have a couple of stories from these times to emphasise these nicknames. Anyone that knows Drew would know he's obsessed with eating. No matter what we did or where we go, food is always a priority. On top of this, the food has always got to have a high meat content. <laughs> so, with that in mind, if no one's happy with the food, be pleased, please make sure you let Drew know. The only thing about, being, the, about food being a priority was when Drew lived in Canwick. He never actually had any food in the house. Unless, as I mentioned earlier, it was chicken, rice or broccoli. Numerous times we would come back starving from a night out in Canwick, only to be disappointed when the cupboards were bare and all that was on offer was a cup of green tea. <laughs> Nowadays, you might get a biscuit or some bread if you're lucky. Isn't that right, Soph? Yes. <laughs> Angry Andy has made an appearance numerous times over the years, although not so much recently, as I think old age has definitely calmed him down. But this was not the case back when Drew first found his love for beer. Our first night holiday abroad at 17. Picture this, we're in a bar in Magaluf. Drew has had way too much to drink, as usual, and gets into an argument with one of the lads. So he decides to storm off up a corridor that is full of curtains, towards the exit. He punches out in frustration and hits what he thinks is, a, thinks is a wall behind, only to hear smashing glass. It turns out there was a huge mirror behind the curtain, which Drew has destroyed and had to pay 200 euros to get fixed. 
which, by the way, I had to go back to the hotel for, as it would not let Drew leave. <laughs> the anger soon turned to panic at having to, having to part with so much money. I had a direct run-in with angry Andy Magluff. After a night out, we headed back to the hotel, and I grabbed a drink of Sprite out of Drew's room. I headed off to bed, only to be woken by someone banging on the balcony doors, shouting, give me that effing Sprite back, or I'll break down the door and knock you out. <laughs> 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 Turns, turns out Drew had hopped over his balcony onto ours and all hell was breaking loose over a little bit of Sprite. I'd clearly touched a nerve and he valued that Sprite highly. So Drew, can I take this opportunity to apologise? And to make up for it, we have got you a little gift today. <laughs> I've lost my place. After this, we used to have regular nights out in Cannock where me battling him out of scuffles in silks became a chore. To this day, he has still not thanked me for all the help that I gave him. So <laughs> ungrateful. These regular incidents in Caddick led to the birth of the nickname, Angry Andy. As I mentioned earlier, Drew and I love to keep to the rules. And by that, I mean any kind of game that has rules, we like to ensure, want to make sure that they're enforced correctly. After all, they are there for a reason. Wouldn't you agree, Drew? However, that is about as far as we agreed. Time after time, we would have continuous debates about who is right about said rules. But, of course, I am always right, as I have Google. Wouldn't you agree, Drew? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Drew's rule-keeping attitude also showed at an early stage in his football career. Not actually playing football, of course, but instead by reffing it. Drew spent his weekends, uh, sorry, whilst the rest of the lads were out playing football and enjoying themselves, Drew spent the weekends earning £15 a game to referee kids' football matches. Now you can understand where all this role imposing stemmed from. And why he's such a good linesman. <laughs> we couldn't do a speech about Drew without saying a few words about the thing he loves the most, means the world to him, can't live without, the true love of his life, the wolves. Everyone that knows Drew knows his obsession with wolves. How anyone can be obsessed with such a boring average football team, I'll never know. For those that didn't realise the heights of Drew's obsession, I think the first thing he said to so from planning the wedding was, it cannot be on a day that wolves are playing. So here we are on an international break. <laughs> Great work, so. <laughs> Another instance where Drew couldn't miss a Wolves game was my 30th birthday in Ibiza. We'd booked tickets to a nightclub before the fixture was released. And out, sorry. And unfortunately, it clashed for a Wolves game. So what did Drew do? Streamed the game on, the, on his phone in the middle of the dance floor while everyone danced around him. <laughs> Needless to say, he looked ridiculous, but at least the Wolves didn't lose, eh, Drew? Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Best of your life. <laughs> but no, seriously, we do. We just want to say a few words about the real love of his life, his new wife, Sophie. I'm sure you all agree, Sophie looks absolutely gorgeous today. Not only is she beautiful though, she's also caring, sweet, and deserves one hell of a husband. Thankfully, and luckily for Drew, she agreed to marry him before she found one. <laughs> Sophie really is a great girl, even if she's a stoky. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I told him to keep that out. <laughs> she was always up for a laugh, and, has, and it's great to have a night out, because she always makes Drew stay out later than he wants to, <laughs> because he's boring. <laughs> All joking apart, so if you look absolutely stunning today, and, and I'm glad to have you as part of our friendship group, and I know for sure that you will make one great wife to Drew. As a couple, Drew and Sophie are a great match. I don't think Drew thought he would ever find anyone who, la who laughs, at much, uh, laughs as much at his terrible dad jokes as much as Soph does. And Soph, I don't think he thought you would ever find anyone who laughs at your farts as much as Drew does. <laughs> <laughs> On top of this, a couple that loves karaoke as much as Sophie and Drew are clearly meant for each other. And I'm sure everyone cannot wait for the beautiful duet from the both of you later. No pressure. <laughs> Talking to karaoke, my fiance and I went on holiday with Drew and Soph, and Drew was in the karaoke bar every night doing his rendition of Sweet Dreams by the Eurythmics. Well, I say every night, there was one night we didn't make it. We headed out for dinner, and Drew was starving, as per usual. He was so eager to eat the bread on the table that when cutting it open, he proceeded to cut straight through his finger, blood everywhere, and a trip to hospital followed. So Drew, please be careful when eating later, as I'm sure Soph doesn't want another meal ruined. Despite ruining the meal and that night of the holiday, Drew and Soph really are a great couple to go on holiday with. Not because they're great fun, but because these, you never have to worry about getting the sunbeds by the pool because these sun worshippers will be up at the crack of dawn every day getting the best spots. We can go on for sun... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Still don't get a good tan. 
We could go on for so much longer with stories about Drew, especially from the stag. But we are a bit worried that Angry Andy will come out because he is hungry. <laughs> so all that remains for us to do is ask you to be upstanding and raise your glasses to Mr. and Mrs. Morris, Drew and Soph. Of the Snugglies! Of the Snugglies!